Welcome back to another episode of Bear Trap on the Boomer Bus channel, a Bears podcast by a Bears fan. I'm your host, Terry, and today we're talking about the Bears and rebuilding their receiver core. But first, I got a bone to pick with you Bears fans. Not everybody, but some of you Bears fans. Cameron Meredith, the receiver at Illinois State that emerged uh, as a nobody, became a pretty good target, and then recently had a knee injury this year that had him out for the season. So I'm uh, listening to the local radio shows like we all do and whatnot, and I hear this number of Bears fans continuously talking about how Cameron Meredith and Kevin White didn't work out. And I gotta, I almost have to pull over and calm down before I keep driving. Otherwise, I'm gonna run into somebody because why are you putting Cam Meredith in the same conversation as Kevin White? That's absolutely ridiculous. So Cameron Meredith had a ACL injury and was out for the year. Of course, we had, um, We had the injuries to Kevin White that kept him out. So you're saying anybody that gets injured is a Kevin White? That's ridiculous. Cam Meredith, when he wasn't injured, actually played and played very well. And so when we're talking about next year and rebuilding this receiving core, oftentimes I hear Cameron Meredith's name being left out like he isn't an option or he isn't even a realistic receiver. And that's absolutely ridiculous. Now, I'll absolutely show my bias. I went to school with him. Uh, wasn't like uh, best friends or anything, but we, you know, we attended ISU at the same time and definitely knew who he was. So there's my bias, but he has been our best receiver in the last few years. That's not even a question. So. Let me get that out first. And of course, he'll play into the puzzle as we go on. But I just had to say that. Okay. So for any of you Bears fans that uh, haven't paid attention and are wondering why we are in this position that we are in with receivers, it was Ryan Pace's fault. There you go. <laughs> so that's all you really need to know. And so we're at a, a point where the cupboard is pretty bare and we got a young a uh, quarterback that needs some options. So um, uh, one thing I will definitely admit is when it comes to free agency, that's not my thing. Like when the Bears sign somebody or, you know, whoever signs somebody, I can say, oh, yeah, that player can be this type of fit and, you know, whatever. But I don't follow who's going to be a free agent this year and who's the top options and all those different things. That's not what I do. I just wait to hear that people got signed. And so uh, while talking about rebuilding, of course, we got to look at the free agency first. So I got. A number of names, and this is just from my quick NFL.com research, got a couple names and I'm going to go through and talk about um, the fit, the likelihood, all that good stuff. And I do want to shout out, this definitely, um, this stems from a good conversation I had last night with uh, one of the fans in the group pages um, just talking about Jarvis Landry. And I'm like, you know, I already knew the receiver topic was going to be a big thing. I was kind of waiting more towards later to talk about it. But, hey, we can talk about it now, especially since I just did the receivers on Boomer Bus. But anyway, so first up, I see Allen Robinson from the Jags is going to be up. That's hilarious because that was one of my favorite receivers that year when uh the draft class came out and, Everybody was kind of um, enamored with other people, but I really liked Allen Robinson. But anyway, he uh, is coming off a torn ACL. So if Cameron Meredith out, then Allen Robinson has to be out. But you're talking about a guy that's a big body receiver, showed that he could get more separation in the league than he did in college. So definitely worked at that, but he's a, a red zone, 50-50 ball type guy. Now, even though he can get separation, would I ever say he has great speed? No. Um, can he bully uh, smaller defensive backs? Yes, he can. He's been a pro bowler. So uh, coming off the injury, though, that's what makes it a little iffy. Um, and I'm not going to get too specific in numbers, but if you're just generally asking me, should he be paid like a top guy or middle guy or you know a cheap contract? 
it's tough to say he should be t- paid like a top guy because you do have the consider will he be back up to 100% uh, like he was before. And even still, before that, he wasn't the fastest of guys. And then I think this all goes back to what type of receivers does Trubisky need. You look at what he did in college, and you look at his skill set, and I do think the big body receivers are going to be some of his best friends. But you want big body guys that have some speed to go downfield. And I'm not sure. I mean, Allen definitely has some deep ball potential, but the injury is what's holding me back. Um, and I, I think if you're talking about how easily can you find somebody like Allen Robinson, I would say this year you got a good chance of finding a lot of big body, uh, receivers in the draft. So I would probably take a pass on him. Not to mention that I think, uh, the Jags will probably put up a decent fight with the numbers. So then that goes to Jarvis Landry, the one that was kind of the big conversation. And this is the guy that I would consider. I would consider Jarvis Landry, uh, to come, uh, to the Bears. A lot of people talking about how he's slow and can't play outside. Okay. <laughs> um, I, I got into the talk about him being able to play in the slot and pretty much if it matters where he produces, if it's outside or inside, uh, this is a guy that has some of the most catches in the last few years. So, um, you know he can produce. You know he has a lot, a lot of talent as far as route running in his hands. Um, you know he has return abilities, been to Pro Bowl like three straight times. So the real question everybody's asking, is he worth top receiver money? And it's tough. So the Bears got a lot of cap room. That's where it really gets tricky. Uh, you got to think um, – and again, it, it, it's weird because I don't know all the free agents. You got to think that you got, you're going to spend most of your money on offense. Um, and I don't know. I, I, I've seen the Bears have plenty of cap room left over after the free agency the last two years. So to sit here and say that paying Landry top money is going to kill us is not true at all. Um, but if he was asking, you know, top $5, no, I wouldn't make him the highest receiver paid or anything like that. But if he, if he's asking for a good amount of coin, I would consider bringing him in because what you got now is Cam Meredith, and he's an outside, he's a big body possession guy. Um, and he's a guy that will command some attention. If you're going to rotate all your coverage over, he's, he's going to be able to move the ball. And so... Landry playing from the slot gives you a off the top option for coverage and it gives you a middle of the field seam option, which we don't currently have uh, with any of our tight ends. So that's somebody I definitely would consider. Uh, then we got Sammy Watkins from Rams. No, <laughs> I mean, if you were paying, I mean, Sammy, he has all the talent. He really does. I, for whatever reason, He just does not become the number one weapon. We saw him get to L.A., and he just did not become the number one weapon again. And if it's not that, then he's hurt. I would not go for Sammy Watkins. Um, Let's see. I mean, he's 24 years old, so he is young, but I don't know. I, I, I just he does have a lot of talent, though. I don't know. I think if you got him at a cheap price, cheaper than the market was asking for, like for some reason he wasn't getting a lot of um, looks, then yeah, I'm not saying dirt cheap, but you know, if you can get him at a cheaper deal than you expected, yes, I would look at him. He is really young and he has a lot of speed, uh, but man, you, <laughs> you're you talking about Kevin White. We're way better route running, but you are talking about Kevin White, so I don't know. I hesitate on that one. And then after that, the receivers pretty much dropped down to the second tier of Marquise Lee, who's also from the Jags and frankly has emerged as a pretty uh, top-notch guy in the absence of Allen Robinson. And then you got Terrell Pryor, hell no. (laughs) And then we got Mike Wallace. So uh, Marquise Lee, I I think – he he's intriguing. Marquise Lee is intriguing. He's somebody I liked coming out of college as well. 
Marquise Lee, I think, will command less money than Allen Robinson. And it's exactly like I said with Jarvis Landry. You'll get that speed in the slot that can take the top off or, you know, really stretch the seams. So I would not hesitate getting Marquise Lee at a pretty good deal as well. Um, he's young and I think, uh, He's definitely going to be a reliable target for someone like Trubisky, someone that he could definitely fall in love with. And uh, Trubisky has plenty of arm strength. So uh, this guy can get open with his routes and Trubisky has the arm and um, touch to put it on him at the right spot. So when you're talking about realistic targets, Marquise Lee, Sammy Watkins, Jarvis Landry, Allen Robinson, for me, I think free agency isn't that big of a, a thing. I, I think, I mean, it's not that big of an option because at this point, it's just no real top flight receivers. Like, you know, if a Julio or somebody like that was in the free agency, of course, I would say put the money down, go all in. But, you know, these guys are more, if you got to question it, then it's probably not somebody you need to go chase after. So I guess that's the best way I put it. I wouldn't chase after any of these guys. If I got the right uh, number, sure, let's pull it. But I wouldn't chase after any of these guys. So if we didn't pull any of those guys from free agency, I wouldn't be shocked. So now that leads us to the draft. And check out the Boom Bus uh, episode that I just put out. I kind of broke down the receiving class as the ones I saw. But... Uh, essentially receivers are like running backs. You can get them at any round. You get them all shapes and sizes. And I think Nick Saban said one of the best things I heard recently when he was talking about receiving core, he said a receiving core is like a basket or a good receiving core is like a basketball team. You got to have your guards. You, ha- you got to have the big forwards and you know, you got to have, sometimes you got to have that center. So, and that's pretty much what it is where a lot of people just look at, a receiving core say, oh, do you got a bunch of good receivers? And that's simplistic. That's very much simplifying it. You really got to say, do we have receivers that can do different things? Because as I said prior to, there used to be one type of receiver, one type of way, West Coast, whatever. But now at this point, there's a lot of different ways to pass the ball. There's the back shoulder fade, you know, the uh, down the field for the big guys, the 50-50 balls. There's still, of course, the speed receivers down the field, but then you also got the lateral quick slot guys. So really when you look in that uh, core, you want to say, well, do we have a guy that can make 50-50 ball catches down the field and in the red zone? Uh, do we have somebody that can stretch the field laterally on our possession routes when we're breaking out towards the in- or the uh, sideline trying to get a first down or trying to stop the clock? Um, do we have somebody that can take the top off the defense and make sure that coverage can't be rotated? All those different things. Um, and so it's got to be well balanced. I don't know how I got on this, but <laughs> basically let's just go to the draft. So for me, we're looking at, the Bears picks. Of course, we got number eight. Um, then we got our second round. We don't have a third round. We got two in the fourth, and then we got uh, the rest. So for me, I'm already saying number eight, and I don't want to get too much into my draft plans because I will talk about that at some point. But for me, you got two top flight tackles, two very top notch tackles that are getting no respect in this draft for whatever reason. I don't know if it'll be like that on draft day, but right now they're not getting respect. You got Mitch McGlinchey, who I think, or Mitch, Mike McGlinchey, who I think is the best tackle. And then you got Connor, um, I want to say Connor Williams from Texas, who I think is almost just as good. And I'm talking about top five level talent that people are overlooking. And so if that's the case, I can move down from eight into the teens and try to pick up another second round pick because the Bears do have a lot of needs. And I don't want to I don't want to sit here and say we can just draft seven guys and be okay. We need some extra picks. So I pick up an extra second round pick, hopefully get one of those tackles in the teens. And then what I would do is in the second round, I pick up Anthony Miller out of Memphis 
um, with one of those second round picks, whichever one is, you know, closer to his range. And Anthony Miller, what he does, he gives you a lot. So, um, for me, I love Anthony Miller. I think, uh, he can give you all those things in a slot, but he's very much like Antonio Brown. He can play outside. He can play outside because of his route running. He can play outside because he has, um, a great explosion, can go up and get the ball, and he has great hands. So if you watch him, that's one of my favorite receivers this year. I think you get him and you move him uh, around. He can play the slot when you need him to, maybe a third down or if you got a good matchup, but then he also can actually play outside and give you a lot of speed. I think if he runs what people expect him to run, then a lot of corners are going to play off coverage and you can really eat up because uh, Mitch will get the ball there fast. And if they're playing off coverage, we can run curls and stops all day and pick up big yards. Um, and then with that, I would come back, uh, you know, if you could pick up a third round, cool. If not, I would come back with one of our fourth rounds. And this is a big if. Uh, depending on his buzz, you might have to trade up to the third round. But I would uh, go after a Quantumist St. Brown from Notre Dame. This guy's 6'5", uh, and he's fast. He's real fast. So he uh, he had a bad year this year because of the quarterback he was playing with. And so I think a lot of people might knock him for that. And he might be a late riser. So if he's really getting buzzed, maybe in the second round, I would double up. But I would target Anthony Miller and uh, Equanimous St. Brown and go with those guys. And uh, he has a, he can offer you a lot, but I'll get back to that. And then uh, in the seventh round, the seventh or sixth round, I would go for one of these guys that, you know what, it, it's tough. It, it's really tough with the buzz. But I would say in the later rounds, depending if he's still around, I would go for Traquan Smith, uh, from UCF, uh, either in the, uh, fifth or sixth, depending, again, it depends on where the buzz is. But if you can get a Traquan Smith or Michael Gallup or, uh, Alan Lazard from, um, Iowa State, then I would say one of those guys is somebody I would definitely be keen to, uh, look at. So then you need a veteran presence. I'm all up for bringing Kendall Wright back. I don't, Kendall Wright was forced to do a lot than he, more than he needed to. He uh, should have just been a slot guy. Um, and I don't know why he gets hate. I mean, I know if people hate the offense from last year, but it wasn't his fault. He was the, one of the better things. So I would bring Kendall Wright back on a one to two year deal. I think he did well. He had good chemistry with, uh, Trubisky and I would let him be the resident slot. And then that way, so what you'll have is Cameron Meredith outside on one side. You'll have uh, Kendall Wright in the slot. And then I will have, um, I will have e, uh, Quantumus play the other outside in our base. And then have Anthony Miller and um, Kendall Wright be the two slots. And honestly, I mean, yeah, you got Shaheen, but I would probably use, if I had those four, I would probably use Anthony Miller a little more on the field than I did, uh, with, um, Adam Shaheen. Adam Shaheen definitely for our rundowns and for our red zone stuff, but, uh, I would, you know, w w the offense we think we should see, I would definitely, uh, have those guys out there. And you think about, um, Tyreek Hill, you think about Albert Wilson and the type of guys they had in Kansas City. They were smaller. Um, and I think you could really find a place for Anthony Miller to go down. So anyway, what I'm proposing is grabbing Anthony Miller in the second round. And then at some point trying to get Equanimous Brown, uh, St. Brown from Notre Dame and then bringing back, um, Kendall Wright. And then of course you'll have to return to Cameron Meredith. And then if you could get one of those bigger body guys in the later rounds, I really think those guys can develop as well. Uh, a lot of people, you know, I recognize you need a veteran presence and I do think Kendall feels that. Um, but you, you look at the top of this free agency and I don't see anybody that I need to get. And so I will take the chance with those young guys. I mean, Cameron Meredith is still, of course, a vet and Kendall. So I think if you bring in 
two young guys like Anthony Miller and Equanimous St. Brown, I think you'll be okay having those guys get a lot of reps. So anyway, uh, I tried to go quick, didn't work, but I would love to hear what you guys think. Uh, I know everybody wants to rebuild this receiving core so much. Tell me why everybody keeps counting Karen Meredith out. Um, but tell me what you would do and what you're thinking uh, we should target. Go to comment section, let me know. Thumbs up, subscribe, share it around, and remember, stay up and bear down.